and I guess we continue now. And actually, the cool part is that we are get to eat some gummy bears now because we didn't do this last time. I'm excited. That's the only reason why I wanted to stream now, so I can finally tackle those gummy bears. All right, nice. I have to say, I haven't had Haribo gummy bears in quite a while. They're better than I remember them to be. Mm, chapter three. Okay, I guess it's these parts here. Maybe let me switch the camera over to the top down view. And then fall the your bearings. Oh, by the way, okay. I was also thinking if I quickly should unscrew um, the slider, the, the Y axis again, and properly put the lubrication in these bearings just to like even for also the comparison later so i can be sure like they are really well lubricated uh, that's what i was thinking um should i do this or do you think uh, it's they they are lubricated already it's like not that important i mean i'm not so sure about uh, the disassembly and then lubricating those but i will make sure that i will lubricate Additionally, lubricate those bearings, especially this one here that had the issues. Okay, so I have the four bearings and I have the two plastic parts. Now we need some screws. Uh, 30 millimeters, uh, one, 130 millimeter, and one long one. Okay. And then those two nuts. Insert linear bearings into the printed parts as shown in the picture. Make sure the first bearing in each printed part is pushed all the way down. Don't try to push the bearings from the other side. There is a rim. First part of bearing should be in line with the top surface of both X and second pair of bearings should be seated on the rim close to the surface on both X ends. You can press the bearings against a flat surface for each insertion. Place two bearings in a way that the inner ball of the second bearings are rotated 45 degrees compared to the first one. This way you will achieve great contact with the smooth rod. All right. So uh, I have to insert it from. Yeah, okay. I, I feel the rim here on this side. So I have to insert it from this side. Okay, how do I push it all the way in? Can I push with like a. Um, with an allen key okay <coughs> so here here I take another rod just to test this this is the okay this bearing yesterday yeah this is the x-axis is the x-axis sideways is this the extruder part or is this this the x yeah. This should be Z, right? So I'm just thinking, I mean, we did add a little bit of lubricant already, but I want, uh, I just, I, oh, by the way, I also ordered lubrication and I ordered isoprop alcohol, but it will arrive like the next days. So I don't mind using this lubrication for now. Okay, so this side is the rim. So I just put this in here. like that and then I get a second bearing and now I just take the second bearing and put it in slightly rotated like so and then I just push it in okay This is not good. This is wrong. No, no, my problem is I didn't push it from the other side. Uh, as the red text said, I put it in from one side. It's the correct side. But the problem is look at the picture. There needs to be a gap in between. And I didn't think because I used one bearing to push the other bearing in. And now there's no gap between them. Do you understand? Like how do I push now the second bearing without pushing the first bearing? Yeah, but if I push a third one then then I'm pushing 
the first one also further in. The first one is now in, only the second one has to go further, you know? I can't put it on the other way because don't try to push the bearings from the other side. There's a rim. God damn it. Okay, I got it out. So let's first push that one in. Why are they not giving tips how to push it in? I don't understand. And I feel like when I'm pushing against the black part here, like when if I push against here, the black part that could be damaging. I shouldn't, I should be careful with that, I think. I guess I already broke the part. Look here. Here it was connected and this is broken now. On the other part, it's still connected. I don't think it's super important, but. Okay, so I put it in now, and now I need to put the other one correctly rotated. Okay, let's get the next two bearings ready. AA battery, ah, yeah, that would have been good. Maybe we should use the online version, not this version, so we can read all those comments. All these, a lot of these bearings have this vibration issue. I don't know if you can hear this. What is this thing for? Uh, this is, these are parts for a 3D printer. Uh, Honbra Dev in uh, in the uh, in in chat linked the current uh, building step. Uh, this is one of the axes of the three D printer that is moving. I did eat the Haribo's uh, for from the previous assembly that we did here. All right, okay. Next one. Here's the rim. And now the other bearing slightly rotated. All right, great. Insert the square nut all the way in. Okay, it's this on this one. But this is too short to reach the... But this is an M30, right? Oh my gosh, it's not. Is this the M18? Oh yeah. Okay, this makes more sense that this has to go in there. Leave a two millimeter gap, so maybe a little bit more. Uh, attention, be very careful during the tightening. Check the nut orientation and do not use excessive force. Insert the nylon nut into the X end idler. But I shouldn't use excessive force, okay, because I can't get it in. Insert the bearing, is there an orientation that's important? Insert the bearing, secure it in place using the M18 screw. If you need, use the M3 screw to pull the nut in. Place your finger on the bearing and ensure it can rotate freely. If needed, adjust the screw. Okay, is there an orientation for the bearing? I guess not. Mm, 
and quite deformed here. Uh, see this? Um, where you can't get the nut to like sit there. But I, I guess the screw is already coming out, so I should be able to pull it in now. Okay, I think. I think that's good. It can. It has a little bit of wiggle room. Is that all, is that fine? Do you see this? It wiggles a little bit, and I can rotate it freely. Okay. Take the remaining smooth rods and compare their length. You need the longest rods. Okay, so this one was the wrong one. We need the longest rods. And we need the three remaining linear bearings. And I need a permanent marker that they also didn't include in the kit. On the first page, they proudly mentioned that they provided all the tools and now scissors were missing and now uh, um, I mean, if I have household tools, what do I need a 3D printer for? I bought this to buy, to print all my household tools. Wipe grease from the outer surface of the bearing with paper towel. Paper towel also not included. The disappointment starts to grow. Position the bearing so that, that you can see two rows of balls like in the picture. All right. Ma make a mark with the parent marker, the outer surface of the bearing in the middle above the two balls. And I have to do it on all bearings, all right. Okay. Now please carefully, gently insert the rod straight into the bearing. Do not apply too much force and do not tilt the rod. In case you manage to push out balls from the bearing, please count them. One or two balls are okay. If there are more of them, please consider ordering new bearings. Insert the rods with bearings fully into the printed parts. The holes in the printed part must be clean. Inspect holes inside the dirt or filament residue. Ensure the correct orientation of the parts and rods. There's a special opening in the top bottom of both X ends. Check if you press the smooth rod all the way in. Okay. Two here. One here. Then put this. Okay, let's inspect. I inspect it. This and this comes in this end here. Nice. It's quite hefty. This is a good or bad sign when the bearings are not even by gravity
This one does. Was too much grease applied? Um, probably. <laughs> but the grease would also slowly make it out, right? Like through the rod and stuff. But again, too much grease. If, if they don't roll freely, it's fine, right? Like the motors are strong enough. It doesn't really matter, right? Um, I think, I would think. Anyway, uh, okay, cool. It's quite, has some weight to it. It, it feels cool. Okay. Assembly the, assembling the X-axis motor pulley, part one. We need the X-axis motor. This is extruder. This is X axis. Okay, and then we need here this part. We are almost at the gummy bears again. There's a flat part of the motor shaft. Rotate it upwards, slide the pulley on, note the correct orientation compared with the second picture. One of the screws must be facing directly against the flat pad of the shaft. Slightly tighten both screws, don't press the pulley against the motor, leave a gap so the pulley can rotate freely. Don't tighten the pulley firmly yet, we will get to that later. All right. Okay, we need the remaining screws in here. And now we have to put the motor in there, the cable on the side. Okay, prepare the M318 screws, prepare the motor for the X-axis with an assembly pulley. Place the X-axis on the motor, show, insert the screws and tighten them so they're positioned at the back of the oval, back in the picture in the back of the oval. Okay, lost the screws. The pulley is mounted the wrong way. God damn it. Thank you. Cable this way and down. You were shaking. <laughs> the real question is. How many of the mistakes like this would I have made and uh, until I would say fuck this i'm buying a uh, red already assembled bamboo or something uh oh this print here is very unclean for the screw here Let me try to show. Hmm. 
can't really see it, but the walls are not great here. No, I haven't tightened them yet. Screw and tighten them so they're positioned at the back of the oval. Okay. Again, the, I'm, I'm unsure how much to tighten them um, yeah, because, of course, it's not like metal where at some point like it just stops being able to screw in. I feel like with my force, I could always like turn them more. Um, I'm assembling a Prusa 3D printer. Okay, this was an easy chapter. Have 10% dose of bears. Four. Compared to the yesterday, this was really an easy chapter. Here, compare the picture. Chapter four, amazing. Okay, if I want to replace those rods, I have to disassemble quite a lot. Okay. The crash only happened because I was distracted picking up gummy bears, okay? There should be a warning. Don't eat gummy bears while assembling. Okay, Z-axis assembly. Warning, printed parts aren't the same. There's a left and right orientation piece. See the markings on the parts. Also note the correct orientation of the frame. The Prusa logo and the safety sticker must be facing towards you. Yep, they are facing towards me here. Actually, I'm wondering, can I like make it so you can kind of see the frame here? I, maybe this is a bit better. You can see a bit more what I'm doing here. Okay, we need the Z-axis bottom left, Z-axis bottom right, the screws. Place the print part next to the frame. See the L and right marking on the parts. Tighten each printed part with the screws. Okay. Okay. 
Are these the correct ones? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Don't need these for now. Okay, but now I need to find the screws. In here are just three different parts. That must be in here. It's Truder Box 4Z axis. Okay, there it is. Six M10 screws out. Where are these M10? and right yep that's, that looks good and they come in from the front let me actually I want to assemble it too, I have ADHD. <laughs> a Voron 2.4. I actually have not come across a Voron. I don't know that one. Yeah, uh, zombie, I... I've been looking forward to this printer for like a year, obviously telling myself, I don't need one, I don't need one, I don't need one, it's dumb, it's dumb, I don't need one. And I didn't have the space anyway. And now I moved to a new place and now I have more space and I decided now it's the time. What is not open source about the Prusa? Okay. Are you afraid it will start collecting dust in a couple of months after the initial hype? Um, I'm not afraid because I know it's coming. <laughs> I don't know.
theoretically you could also go to the parts list of the Prusa and get all those parts yourself, right? And ask people that have a 3D printer to print the, the parts for you. Placing the Z screw covers. Now we need the Z axis motors. Can a 3D printer make another 3D printer that can make 3D printers? I believe that was kind of like one of the early like ideas. Uh, so you you take a three like the original like this 3d printer uses 3d printed parts right so there was a 3d printer before it uh, that didn't have 3d printed parts so um, now once once your printer is set up you can print all the replacement parts that are 3d printed um, so that's somewhat the idea but of course you it, it fails as soon as you need like elect, elect, electrical stuff and of course like more stable metal rods and screws and stuff but the idea is there already that uh, you somewhat um, yeah that the printer is kind of self-replicating Each, each X, Z axis motor has a different cable length. The shorter one must be on the left side. Okay, that comes to on the left. And that one then comes to the right. Then we need the Z screw covers. They were in here. Remove the trapezoidal nuts from the motors. The new kit units no longer have trapezoidal nuts on the motor rods. They are included inside the motor kit box. Ah. Why are they called Trapezoidal. What does trapezoidal mean? Yeah, a trapez. Okay, that's what I thought. But why are they considered a trapez? Aren't, and is this not like, is this not better described as a cone and not a, a trapezoidal? Because I would understand that trap trapezoidal has like clear edges. Trapezoidal is a thread profile. Oh, indeed, it does look interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I. I can. I might understand why it's called this way. Okay. Okay. So I have them here. Screw the set screw covers onto both. Let's screw. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh oh. Okay, no. We 
you are also considering buying a Prusa. Um, what are your reasons uh, why you think wanted to pick one up? Um, I'm curious um, because I also looked at different ones and then I decided I want to go with a Prusa. A co-worker has one and swears by it. Other co-workers have an Ender, but they are on the fence on it. I was told Prusa is the go for just wanting to print versus configuring it non-stop. Okay, interesting. Because the what you see here is I'm assembling it right now, step by step, which takes a lot of time. And um, there were already some concerns I had. So um, like the bearings are not really great like one bearing seems kind of like broken i was confused what to do about it and i decided to still use it for now but uh, um yeah i don't know i it it might not be configuring it non-stop but it evidently has um requires quite some time investment to build up on the positive part is then that you understand your printer really like i already feel like oh this is how like the machine is built and every little part I had in my hand. So even if there are issues, I feel like I, 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 it will be much easier for me to troubleshoot and figure out how to solve them. Um, um, yeah. Uh, and and that, that was one big reason for me. I w really want to understand this machine because I felt like whatever people are saying about 3D printers, it's still a lot of troubleshooting you have to do with 3D printers, with many of them, at least. I guess below the $2,000 mark, uh, it's it's like, uh, it feels that way, I don't know. So I figured I want one where I really understand everything. And, I, and then on top of it, huge community around Prusa, um, the, the online manuals go into very much detail, try to warn you about everything that could go wrong. Um, um, it just feels like if I have problems, I can also find information about it much easier. Um, I like the philosophy. I, I saw like a documentary about Prusa on YouTube uh, made by them, uh, which I thought, oh, this is kind of a cool company. I, I like what they are doing and um, yeah, so so all all that together, and and for me, it's also a Lego project, it's like grown-up Lego. I, I was really looking forward to the build. However, if I would have gone purely for I want a printer and just print, right now YouTube is full of the Bamboo Lab printer, this complete printer that you get, which apparently works like incredibly well, just out of the box printing without issues because it has some very advanced features and stuff. So um, I, I feel like if, and, and it was a, a bit more expensive than the Prusa, I think, um, but it seems like completely worry-free. Uh, so I don't know, maybe you can look up some YouTube videos about that. With the Ender 3 and some upgrades. Yeah, that's what I read too, that you can also like upgrade and Ender a lot and make it a lot more reliable and better, yeah. There's a lot of buzz around the bamboo uh, printer, which it seems really great. It seems just like immediately to go. But what I do, so what I would caution about and why I probably would have been careful about ordering one as well is because I don't know, or we don't, I guess we don't know yet the longevity of it. Like how quickly do parts wear out and then how easy can you repair them? Because there are parts that will probably wear out over time. Metal scraping against metal, a bearing might break or something. Um, I guess sooner or later it might happen. Um, and we don't know yet how the printer acts in like, you know, maybe there's some weird grease build up that causes then mechanical issues or something. I, I don't know, like I'm not a mechanical engineer. I, I Maybe I'm talking bullshit, but I feel like a lot of the stuff can run great for a year and then start to have problems or something. So, and we don't know this because it's a new printer just yet. But again, oh, you can also get, of course, the Prusa already assembled, uh, I just realized. And then you don't have the setup part. It's a bit more expensive, but it's already assembled and I assume already tested. So that might, could be the way to go if you really just want to print. Or maybe your friend really has fun building it. So buy the kit and ask them if they want to build it or something, I don't know. <laughs> All right. For the following step, please prepare the set motor left shorter cable. 
and the Z motor right, the longer cable, and eight screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See the second picture. The motor with the shorter cable is on the left and the motor with the longer cable is on the right. Motor cables must be oriented towards the frame. So like this, towards the frame, towards the frame. There's a small cutout in the frame on the lower edge for the cable. Ah. Uh -huh, I see it. Secure each motor with four screws. Tighten evenly and carefully as you might break the printed parts. All right. Oh. Okay, carefully tighten now.
Okay. Nice move. Did I make a move? Okay, now we need to drop his zoidal nut. M18 screws, probably it might be all that is left here. So four of those and the four nuts. Are these the M18? Yeah. Messing around? Now I'm super self-conscious. What did I do? <laughs> okay. Turn the X axis upside down and insert nuts into the traps on both X ends. Okay. Carefully rotate the X axis on its back side. What do you want to print with it? Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> there are a few things I want to repair. Um, make maybe some small, try to make some parts for it. Like my Pokemon Go thingy, the, the battery hinge is broken. Maybe I can design a clip for it. And I don't know, I, th there's, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I need the TSA keys for. Okay. Note the orientation of the trapezoidal motor nuts. What orientation? Somebody broke me. Or did I, no, no, I read this accidentally on the forum that these uh, trapezoidal nuts, check this out. And I just, real, I just remembered that. Do you see? that here and here is threading and here and here is no threading. It's very sneaky. Only on these sides are, is threading and these opposite side don't have threading. And this is very sneaky um, because it doesn't explicitly say that here. Because it says here you can use any of the four holes, but two of them are threaded. Oh. 
Okay, the thread is smaller. Uh, but still, I don't know. Wait, what the heck? Oh my god. In here. So in in here, you have to put another nut. I feel like this could have also been more explicit that there that all four nuts have to go in. Damn, how do you get it in there? Let's see if the screw goes in. Hmm. It's very difficult to get that in there. I think now I got it. Now, finally. Oh, 
All right. Cool. Besides the X axis, please prepare the following step. Smooth, now come the other two small throats. Nice. Be careful while installing the X axis on the trapezoidal lead screws. The process should be smooth, otherwise, you might damage the thread inside the plastic nut. Reset the axis if necessary. Carefully slide the X axis on the trapezoidal lead screw by rotating both screws simultaneously. Let the X axis slide until both trapezoidal lead screws are visible. If you feel an, a significant resistance, try to reseat the axis first. Make sure the top smooth rod of the X axis and the lower edge of the frame are parallel. Now please be careful, gently insert the remaining smooth rods through the bearings on the X axis all the way down into the printed parts. Do not apply too much force and do not tilt the rod. In case you manage to push out balls from the bearings, please count them. One or two balls are okay. If there are more of them, please consider ordering new bearings. Okay, crazy. Okay. Like this. should be parallel and now let's slide nice Cool. Now we need those two parts. And the remaining screws. Awesome. Place the Z axis top left part on the rods and align with the frame. Ensure the holes in the printed part are fully aligned with the holes on the frame. Use two screws to tighten the Z-axis top left part. Don't use excessive strength during tightening. In case of increased resistance, try to place the screws from the other side, clean up the hole. Repeat the step on the other side of the frame with the Z-axis top right printed part. Get this a little bit further down. Oh my gosh, it almost looks already like a 3D printer. That's insane. Oh, it's really difficult. I feel like I could screw a lot more revelation still, but at the same time, I feel like this is already very tight. I leave it.
Hmm. On this side, it, it feels weird. I feel like the metal threads on the machine part are not because there's huge resistance to screw that in but I'm I'm not pushing against the part yet it's just the metal frame This was it. We get already more Haribos. Damn. I think I will. I think that's good progress tonight. Um, I feel like I don't need to rush it. I don't have. It. I don't have to have it like done tomorrow or something. I don't want to check the final look compared to the picture. And. Next comes the um, extruder, and I think this is also a very long, this might be the longest. I mean, this alone has 30 pages. So yeah, let's not get started on this one. Um, let's commit to this another time. We, we did two smaller chapters, and it already looks like a 3D printer. I feel like this is already like huge success. Check this out. Okay, yeah, I know what we will do. I just remembered. And hopefully, and that should be like a small project for an hour or so. Maybe, maybe max two hours. 
if I design a challenge on stream, then everybody knows the solution, I guess. I actually have an idea for another challenge, but I don't know. My addict, my Minecraft addiction is gone, so I'm not that uh, motivated, you know, to work on stuff there. It's um, I, I want to start, I don't know, focusing on other things again. Uh, okay. Okay. You can go back and watch, you know, Psycraft YouTubers and stuff. <laughs> watch some Minecraft, you will get motivated. Yeah, you know, maybe the next update, maybe gets me excited. I mean, I think the, the new armor thing stuff is cool. I mean, the Minecraft addiction will come back. I know that. It might be another year or so, but I know that Minecraft is an awesome game. I, for sure, like, if I will get addicted to it again. Right now, I, for example, I feel a lot more Factorio. Like I would really like to play Factorio right now. Um, maybe Satisfactory, but I feel more like Factorio. But if I start Factorio now, I know hundreds of hours are wasted. So I'm still like pushing down the addiction uh, for Factorio and redirect it a little bit in the 3D printer, which I wanted to build for a while. Um, uh, yeah. And then I have other projects I, I want to work on, so no factorial for now. And I still, of course, want to like kind of find a nice ending for the Minecraft server as well. So there will be a little bit of videos I still have to make, but because my addiction is gone, it will be a, a bit more convincing myself to work on it. You know, it's not that much fun then, but I definitely want to like, you know, kind of finalize it to, to say, okay, the project is complete now. Um, so, yeah. The prerequisite playing Factory is to get unemployed first. The good thing as a freelancer is you don't realize once you get unemployed, you know, because, you know, you just choose to not take that many projects on and then you let the project slip a little bit and the repercussions of this, you feel like half a year later or a year later, you know, when you start making your taxes or something, you realize, holy shit, I, I don't have any invoices I can write anymore. When, when is the money coming in anymore? You know, so, so you don't feel it. Um, it's very, it's very dangerous. It, the, it, the, the problems sneak up on you. Okay, so here's what I wanted to make. Let me quickly hit sort it here. A little idea I wanted to test out. Um, I don't even know if my stream is set up for this, so give me one second.
Yeah, I, I was just saying I lost chat. Everything is screwed up. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Okay. I had this idea of an everything API, basically use JetGPT or you know generally OpenAI, the uh, the text model, um, to generate API responses based on the API path. I'm sure I'm not the first one with this idea. It seems like such an obvious thing, so it probably already exists. But the idea is, you know, that we can use uh, JetGPT or the AI to generate API responses. So so here is just an example. Okay, we could, uh, for example. Um, have write something like this. Um, uh, create a HTML document that matches um, the following URL. Uh, URL path. Um, actors top 10 dot uh, top 10 uh, add links to at uh, href match create a HTML document with content that matches the following URL path add href links to uh, related uh, topics And then maybe you give it like uh, a starting point. Something, you know, just like a basic and then body and then it should uh, write here. So now let's submit it. And now based on this URL path, it, it should now uh, create an HTML document with the top 10 actors of all times, including links to their page, right? And now you send this back as a response. Um, um, and uh, then somebody can click on it and the next page is generated. Does that make sense? Oh, I should. I should probably change the title, sorry. Okay, change the title. Okay, so this is like the idea and I thought it would be kind of fun to create this little project, a little website with this um, because I also wanted to check out the op OpenAI API and play around with it. I haven't done this uh, yet and I always wanted to check out like the API. How could I build something like this? Um, so uh, let's switch over to VS Code and um, let's get started with like a basic um, uh, Flask Python terminal. So uh, I don't know what the setup on here. Is there Python installed? Okay, perfect. Python minus m pip. Wait, how pip? Uh, I'm I'm dumb. <laughs> My God, I have I haven't coded in like a month. I'm completely out of it. Um, I'm an idiot. Python pip also. Okay. 
not pip. Virtual env. I'm an idiot. What, what, what am I talking? Pip. Uh, what am I? In? Okay. Trust me. I know. I I did Python programming before. Okay, and now pip install flask. I don't, I, uh, Python is for me the, you know, as you can see, I'm a very professional programmer. So Python for me is uh, the easiest. Um, okay, so we, <coughs> we got this. Let's maybe put me up there in the chat overlay. So path hello world and then we want to do like um